Greetings and welcome to the introduction to astronomy. In this week's discussion on the celestial sphere, we are going to talk about the ecliptic and what that means in terms of the celestial sphere. So what is the ecliptic? Well, the ecliptic is actually the apparent path of our sun on the celestial sphere. So it is the path that the sun appears to take. And we can see that here, the one circle down here labeled the equator is the celestial equator, which we've talked about in a previous video. The ecliptic will be inclined toward this by some specific amount. And in this case, it is actually tilted by 23 and a half degrees to the celestial equator. So they intersect at the two equinoxes. Those are the times when the sun is on the celestial equator. Those are the only two days of the year when the sun is on the celestial equator. And that is the first day of spring and the first day of fall. Now, if you recognize that 23 and a half degree number, that is actually the tilt of Earth's axis. And that affects the difference between the ecliptic and the equator. Why they are different. If the Earth were not tilted at all, the ecliptic and the equator would be exactly the same line. They would be one and the same. If the Earth were tilted more, there would be a bigger angle between them. So the angle between these two is also the tilt of Earth's axis. Now when we look at the ecliptic, what are we seeing? We know that the sun isn't really moving. So really we're seeing a reflection of Earth's motion around the sun in the sky. Now we can look at that a little bit here. So here we see some images of the Earth and sun. So this is what's actually happening, not what we see in the celestial sphere. But we could see that here in June, there's the Earth. The sun is going to appear off in the direction of the constellation of Taurus. A couple months later in August, the sun now appears in the direction of the constellation of Cancer. Now that means those are the constellations that you cannot see. So those are the ones that are going to be blocked out by the sunlight. So the constellations you'd see at those times are the constellations opposite. So the prominent constellations of the zodiac here in August would be things like Sagittarius. And in June, it might be more like Scorpius. It would be whatever is opposite to the sun in the sky. So what follows the ecliptic? The only thing that follows it exactly is the sun. The sun will always be on the ecliptic. Why? Because that's how the ecliptic is defined. That is the path of the sun. So the sun has to be on the ecliptic. It can't be any place else. Close to that, we will find the moon and planets. And the zodiacal constellations, those shown in the image here, are also located in the general direction of the ecliptic. And that's why these constellations have gained importance over time. It's not because they're the brightest or most prominent constellations in the sky. It is where they happen to be located and the fact that the sun, moon and planets will happen to travel through them over the course of a year. And in fact, we can see that in our last image here. And this is annotated a little bit to kind of highlight where these are. But here we can see three planets in the sky together. And note that they're not random. They pretty much follow a path right around here of the ecliptic of the ecliptic. Now there's going to be some variations. The planet orbits are tilted a little bit relative to Earth's. So you won't have a perfect line. But the planets will always be roughly in the line of the ecliptic, which is going through the same constellations that the sun goes through over the course of a year. So let's go ahead and finish up with our summary. And what we've looked at this time is the ecliptic and we defined it as the apparent path of the sun across the celestial sphere. It intersects the celestial equator at two points and those are the equinoxes the first day of spring and the first day of fall. And we also saw that the moon and planet will also travel in paths that happen to be close to the ecliptic. So that concludes this discussion on the celestial sphere and the ecliptic. We'll be back again next week for another topic on the celestial sphere. So until then, have a great day, everyone. 
and I will see you in class.